Okay, welcome to the second video in the series where we're going to add some repoose decoration to the little dollhouse jewellery box. And as you can see from the top there, we're also going to set a ruby into the lid. So here we are. Next part of the series, we've finished the silver box. It has a lid that comes off, which I can't show you now because it doesn't come off. <laughs> Famous last words. There's a lid that comes off with a nice little rim on it. And uh, you can see how big it is from the size next to my fingers there. So essentially what you want to do is draw your design roughly onto the box to get you roughly the size you need to be at. I have chosen a little ruby here, which is going to go in the centre of there. I'm going to set that into the top of the box. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I've got some thin foil like silver here, which has got some old hole marks on it. So this part here in the centre, this is going to be that part and it's going to be cut out and then it's going to be repoussed decorated and these four parts here, these are the four leaves which are going to go around it and then obviously we have to do the other sides too I'm not going to show you in detail every single one but I'll do one leaf and I'll do the flower and show you roughly how it's done and then you can proceed from there yourselves if you want to so the first step that you need to go after is um, this is done by the way with a felt tip pen uh, there's nothing fancy about that particularly so the first thing you need to do is to make sure that the, the other side of your repoussed silver is going to be nice and bright and clean which currently at the moment that is not so that needs to be done and then you need to get your nail scissors and cut these out one technique though is because these are so small is to actually leave them on the silver strip and do the repousse while it's on the silver strip and I'm going to show you both ways in fact so I'm going to leave the leaves here on the silver strip and I'm going to cut that one out. Alright so here we are we've cut our piece off and we've marked it off in a flower shape. You can also file the edges and we're now going to proceed with um, to just to demonstrate the repoussing technique. I'm only going to do this once for one piece so you won't have to put up with the whole thing. <laughs> okay so what we've got here uh, these are repoussing punches and uh, although they do look all uh, the same sort of pointiness from here they do actually have different sized tips to them. Uh, they're nice uh, objects actually, they're, they're quite nice to look at. And here we have a little mallet. You don't need a particularly heavy mallet to do this because it's only very thin foil. Okay, so the first part of the technique is to use what's called a chisel punch, which is essentially a punch that has um, a flat side to it. You do this from the positive side, the side that the customer is going to look at, and you dent it with the hammer. Um, to make a crease and the reason that you do that is so that when you go to the back side to do the repoussing you can see pretty much where you've got to work from. So once that's done it looks like this and then you can flip it over and you can see now how it's possible to see um, the bits you've got to work with the little sections are now delineated by the creases. So the next thing you're going to do is take a a fairly wide tipped repoussing punch and we're going to dome out the backs of these flower tips petal tips rather uh, let's see if I can do this on the camera, I might be able to you never know it might slip off, or it might not So you can see there how it's been domed out. Okay, so what happens when you do this is it bends the silver into an overall shape, which is probably not where you want to be. And it did it, as you can see, it did it on the first stage, and it's now it's done the opposite on the other stage. So what you then do is you go back around with this. And in this particular case, uh, you know, the silver's so thin, you can just push it with the... Uh, you don't, you don't necessarily need the mallet in this case. If you're using thicker silver, you might need the mallet. And that brings you back more to the flower shape, uh, rather than uh, sitting there with like a dome shape. Uh, and that, that's a low relief repoussed decoration. Um, might need a little bit of tweaking, but um, what you can do is go around the edges with a file, make sure they're nice and round and smooth, and that would help the decoration. Now, in this particular flower's case, um, you could get a narrower punch and, and go into the um, accent corners there, the edge of the petals. We are going to set a ruby in the middle of this, and the ruby is a 2mm ruby. 
which means that um, we're going to need a slightly bigger than 2 mil recess in the centre there. So I'm not going to do any further work on this one. So as you can see that was pretty quick. Uh, there's a quick shot there just to show you how, where we are with it. Obviously all of the, the felted pen will disappear when it gets uh, soldered on. So next we're going to just show you how to do the leaves, maybe one or two of them. The approach is very similar. You would be um, using the chisel punch to delineate the centre of the, the leaf divide there. And then you may even go around the edge. Um, but in this particular case uh, it may well be that we just need to do the repousse from the back and then cut the edge out with the, the nail scissors. So that's what it now looks like. This is the punch that we use for the flowers. As you can see it's a little bit big. So I'm going to go with a slightly weird one. And I do even have a smaller one than that which, which we might need to use for the lower part of the leaves there. So again uh, you turn the piece over. So working from the back with um, a slightly smaller punch than we had before. I'm going to make a dent, dent mark with this punch and then I may use the slightly finer one to get down the base of the leaves so that's roughly what they look like once they've been repoosed uh, with, the, with the two punches you can now go across the front again and just press down with a chisel punch just to push them flat again and these now need to be cut out with the nail scissors and these four leaves were done on the strip because they are really tiny I mean that's the size of my finger there so they are really really tiny so it would have been pretty difficult to do them not impossible but but reasonably difficult to do them if they weren't attached to the strip Okay, so there's the pieces finished and laid out and cut out with the nail scissors. Uh, it gives you kind of an idea of what it's going to look like when it's when it's finally done. So here's our little silver box now. It's had the repoose decoration added to the top. This has been soldered on with easy solder. And there's been a little bit of engraving done, which you can see actually just. There's been a bit of engraving done on the front there. And this is, what you see there is called dot relief and it provides a background to the leaves that are going to go onto the front of there. So I'm now going to solder some leaves onto the front of there. Okay, you can see what we've got here. Repoosed leaves which have been added. You can see them moving there and there's solder paste underneath them. There's actually four just there. Now, the box has been just separated just to avoid any sticking. You don't want the lid to end up stuck on, so... There you go, you can see the solder come down. So we have uh, here a ruby, and the ruby is two millimeters. We're going to make from this strip of silver here um, a mounting so that we can set the ruby into the top of the little jewelry box. Okay, so our ruby kind of looks like this, and uh, let's do... there you go. Now this here comes to about one millimeter. That's kind of getting towards a millimeter. And we need the, the tines to come back halfway up to grip the stone. Um, so I'm going to say the whole thing, uh, including the tines from there to there, is 1.5 millimeter. That's what I'm going to say. Now, this piece here, the mounting for this is going to be the box itself. So I'll just do a quick diagram and show you what I mean by that. So if you do a cross section of the lid, of the actual lid, like this, and then you've got your ruby mount which is a millimetre and then there's a half millimetre set of tines and your ruby sitting in there like that and, it, and then essentially the bottom of the ruby is going to come out like this it may not come all the way down uh, it's difficult so if you cut a hole which is slightly less than the diameter of the ruby in the actual box itself or in the flower if you like then all you've got to do is solder this ring on the surface with the tines on it. And that's essentially how I'm going to mount this stone. So firstly the, the ruby is about 2 millimeters uh, wide. So I've marked off this strip of silver here, which is as you can see, you can look at the tip of the pen there, it's pretty small. And um, there's a half mil strip there and a one mil strip there, just, to, just so that I know roughly where I'm working to. I'm going to leave it on this long prong here because it's a little bit easier to work with it when it's really tiny. The next thing that I need to do is I need to determine with a two millimeter drill bit just exactly 
how long I need that to be. You can't calculate it, but these stones are not calibrated, so it probably won't be very accurate to calibrate it, to calculate it. Okay, so you can see here that we've we've got a two millimeter drill bit, and we've curled the uh, silver around it. If we unpeel that, there you go. You can see there's a little scribe mark that I made, which shows you how long it is. So I'm not going to measure that. I'm going to use that to work out how, how what the prong spacing is going to be for the stone. Okay. So to build the the, the tines, I'm going to have four tines. Okay. So I'm since you're going to divide the strip by eight, and then you do this like this because I don't want the tines to fall on the join. When we curl this round and bring it together, you can see there pretty much what we've done to this strip. We measured a, a half millimetre strip on one side of it and we've made serrated tines on it. And what we're going to now is um, wrap it around the two millimetre drill bit and then cut it and then solder it and I'll show you that when it's done. Okay so here we have the metal uh, wrapped around the two millimetre drill bit. Okay this little area here you can see here this has been flattened out with the back end of a drill bit uh, about three millimetre drill bit in fact in order to prepare this for soldering which I'll show you in a second. The stone claw has been added just here and it's got solder all around it so now to solder it out if you remember from the diagram I'll just bring the diagram over we were going to cut a hole in the actual lid so we need to drill a hole through the centre here so that the um, back end of the ruby's got somewhere to fit into. This is where we are now with the little box. We drilled a one millimetre hole in there to accommodate the bottom of the stone and then we've dished it out a little bit with a two millimetre drill bit. Okay so here we are with the stone in it. I haven't closed the tines yet because I've still got to solder the, uh, the box hinges on the box catch on the front. But that's kind of what it looks like. It's starting to look quite nice isn't it? You can see there on close up there's also a lot of fire stain on the box there. Now don't worry, that will all get cleaned off, so that'll be fine. But that's kind of how the stone mount looks. And um, obviously it's pretty crude, but it's also pretty tiny. You can make mounts with little tines on, but I didn't think it would look right on this particular design. I think that one looks better, to be honest. Anyway, next job now is to um, sign off this video, and we're going to be finished now. Um, the box will get cleaned up. There will be another video after this part 3 in which we will add the hinges. Um, so look out for that one. Thanks very much for watching folks. Bye.